Uh, Jim Collison, we're at Infotech 2014 afternoon. I'm here with uh, Dustin Clanch, and, and uh, Dustin, thanks for taking a few minutes to be with us. Thank you. Um, we, we uh, your session that was on a, was some mobile technology, and so tell us first of all who you are. Not who you are, but you can say who you are, where you're from, what you do, those kinds of things. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Like as you said, I'm Dustin Clonch. I'm the CEO of Agilix Software Development. We're in Lincoln, Nebraska. Agilix. Spell that Agilix, for me. A G I L X. Just one I. <laughs> all right. Um, my mom still calls it Agilix, so <laughs> I. I do not. I'm not offended when people like you know. I'll go home for the weekend. And, How's Agilix doing? And I'm like, y y eventually you're just like, okay, hey, at least she knows. Yeah, you know. She's trying. And, uh, yeah. So at least she knows I got a new job. Pumping, you know. But uh, yeah. how long have you been? Uh, how long? You, I assume you started the company. Yep. Me and my business partner Jake McElroy. Okay. Um, he was actually we interviewed. We both interviewed last year. And mm, okay. He's back working today. Yeah. But um, we started it in March of 2011. So okay. we're a little over three years old. Did I interview you last year too? Okay, sorry, I don't remember That's those. Right. It was That's a right. it was a long you know sure a lot of a lot of people in in gym years that was like ten years ago. <laughs> but uh, well, good, welcome back. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, last year we were talking about more of the business side of it. Okay. Um, Jake's our COO. He's our operations guy. Um, and so he came down. We we kind of tag teamed about operations. Okay. Um, I'm developer and operations. Okay. Um, and CEO. So it's like yeah, you got all a busy together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Me and uh, our CTO, Jeff Hale, came down and talked about SignalR. Jeff's kind of our software mastermind. Um, he's been doing software, developing software professionally for a long time. So we came down and talked about, we're kind of passionate about SignalR. We use it a lot. Um, we, we pitch it a lot to our clients to save them money. So it was we thought it was pertinent to come down and yeah. pitch it to the Infotech crowd, basically. Yeah, good. Well, we'll talk about SignalR here in just a second. Last year when we did this, we had terrible lighting, and so I brought in hey. new lighting this year. Uh, so even us podcasters can iterate and and learn from our Agile. mistakes. Yeah, that's the the uh, the video was almost useless last year. I was like, <laughs> oh, I was so sad when we got done. I'm like, all this time I spent it was too dim. We were just a couple doors down when we did that, and and it was too dim. So I brought my own lighting this year oh, just to make sure. It I don't know if it'll do any working. It's for looking me. good so far. Good. Yes, it's looking good. Signal R. R. Talk to me about that. What is that? I have never heard of it. Before. Okay. So uh, most people have heard of HTML5. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes the news and everything like that among the IT world. Uh, one of the specifications of HTML5 uh, is called WebSocket. Okay. Um, WebSocket. So, so I'll start off kind of back in the day. Traditionally, what happens when you went to a website yeah. and you would type in Google.com and hit go, it would send a, like a, a request out to Google servers. Google servers would say, oh, well, this request is coming from Jim, and he wants, he wants the index page of Google, or he wants to Google kittens. And it would do whatever it does, and it would return this all this HTML back through the web to your browser, and it would render a full page of search results about kittens. Well, for a long time, kind of the holy grail of web development has been how do we reduce that traffic so we don't have a, a full, what's called a full request and response Because it's kind of chatty, isn't it? When it's, it's chatty. Doing it's, that, there's a lot chatty. of overhead to it. Mm -hmm. HTTP itself is not a lean uh, mm -hmm. protocol. Don't it, let Vince Cerf hear you say that. Yeah. <laughs> He, he would agree. He, lo he <laughs> yeah. loves WebSocket. Yes, yes. So, um, so basically, there were a lot of kind of early attempts at what we call duplex communication on the web. Mm -hmm. um, so in other words, if I have a browser, I can make a request to a server, and the server is always sitting there listening. But if I'm a server, and I want to update the client and say, hey, I've got new information for you, there's no way to do that. Mm. Um, it, it just it didn't exist. I always The client always had to initiate the request to sure, the server. Sure. With Signal R or with WebSockets, which is okay. WebSockets is the HTML5 specification okay. that Signal R is based on. Perfect. So Signal R implements WebSockets. And Signal R is a Microsoft, Microsoft product, product. Okay. released February, I think February 2013. So it's a little so over a year recent. old. Yeah. Okay. Pretty, pretty young technology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so basically, the reason that Microsoft came forth with Signal R was when WebSockets was announced as part of the HTML5 specification, developers rejoiced everywhere. They said, oh, this is great. This answers an age-old problem. Um, the issue was, number one, even though it was a great specification, there was no company out there taking the lead of, OK, developers, you've got this great new specification. How do I implement it? How do I, how do I actually deliver it to my client and make it valuable to them so I can make money and, and, and you know, further, further my, my career? Well, Microsoft stepped forward and said, okay, well, we're going to take this technology, we're going to keep it open, but we're going to kind of wrap it up and tell developers how to use it. Um, another issue with any kind of HTML5 technology is that 
modern. You need a modern browser. Mm -hmm. So you know, as developers and as tech guys, we use the, modern, the latest Chrome and Firefox and maybe IE. Um, but let's hope not. Yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> but we all know that there are. You know, the CEO of the company, the CFO, or the chairman of the board. He uses IE8, and he's always going to use IE8 because that's where his toolbar is, his favorites. He's not going to change. So what Microsoft did is something, they did something really smart. Is they created SignalR, and what SignalR does is it goes out when you when you use SignalR as a developer or in a client, totally behind the scenes. It says, okay, is this a modern browser? If it's a modern browser, I'm going to use WebSockets because that's the newest, greatest thing that I. That's my my holy grail. If it's an older browser, I'm going to, if they call it gracefully fall back, I'm going to mm -hmm. gracefully fall back to either Flash, like Macromedia Flash or right. Adobe Flash, or uh, Ajax or some technology that this browser supports to still allow the functionality that, that they need. So you don't get but the whole thing. You don't get the the efficiencies. Right, right. exactly. We're still real right. chatty. Same, same end result, not okay. the efficiencies. Right, yeah, yeah. So that was a huge deal. Because as a developer, then, I can implement SignalR, and I don't have to worry about a browser supporting right. uh, websockets. Right. Ideally, any you know anymore. I think IE10 uh, and then Chrome and Firefox and Opera all support it, and Safari. IE10 and above support it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like I said, it's part of the HTML5 spec, so it's pretty new. But the paradigm shift was like I said, it was all of a sudden I can just have my web page sitting there, no no not refreshing the page, no activity for me. The server that I'm connected to, that I have a socket connection with. All of a sudden, it can it can send me a message. Mm. So if I have a business intelligence dashboard and I'm trying to look at sales or user registrations or click-throughs or anything like that, uh, sales for example, when a customer goes on from around the world and makes a sale per, makes a purchase on my website, my that website server that web server can send a message to the client proactively and say, oh hey, there's a, you, your website has a new sale. And so it's a real-time dashboard, sure. real-time two-way communication sure. between clients and servers. And so does that subscription process happen the first time they open the page and then it calls back? Yeah, to, yeah. Okay. it can. Um, okay. So it's a JavaScript library that you basically put in your page. And you can it supports things like groups and authentication. Okay. At its simplest form, you're exactly right. The page loads and the JavaScript is executed. The JavaScript goes out to the server, to the SignalR server, and says, hey, subscribe me to event ABC. Whatever that right, is. Whatever events right, you want. Right. So may, maybe, it's, maybe it's customer purchase is the name of the event. Subscribe me to this event. So then when a customer goes on and makes a purchase on your website, it goes out and it calls that SignalR event on the server. It broadcasts this to everybody that's subscribed to this customer purchase event. Send the message. Now, on the client side, depending on how programmed the web the web client, maybe it says something, maybe it doesn't, maybe it ignores it, maybe it only tells me if the purchase is over hundred dollars. I have complete, still complete control sure. over those mes that messaging, but the the data is there, mm -hmm. so I can so I can consume it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, and so that requires on the server side. So do I, I need to install an additional. What am I installing on the server for this for this to work? Sure. What do I do need sure. to install? On the server side, so there's a couple different things. Um, SignalR is a, on the client side is a JavaScript library, mm -hmm. and then on the server side, Microsoft has a managed C sharp, so it's a managed code library okay. that you can reference if you're using ASP.NET or MVC or okay. any, any of the Microsoft stack technologies. Sure. But the nice thing about it is, is, is about a year and a half ago, Microsoft open source ASP.NET. Mm. So they said they completely opened the source source code for it. Have you heard of the Mono framework? I have not. Okay. Mm. So Mono is an uh, open source community driven effort to write a platform agnostic port of the .NET framework. Okay. So it's the Mono framework, and it runs on Linux and Mac OS and and iOS and and Android and there's ports for everything. So what they did is when they open sourced ASP.NET, part of that was SignalR, because it falls within that family uh, okay. of, of technologies sure, at Microsoft. Sure. So the people that run the Mono Foundation immediately grabbed onto that and said, okay, this is great. We're going to take it. We're going to do this Mono implementation of SignalR. So what happened then when they did that is now you've got a Linux port, hmm. a Mac OS port, an iOS port, an Android port, a BSD mm -hmm. port. You've got all anything that supports the Mono framework, which is almost every single platform out there. Sure. You've got the SignalR port too. Yeah. And that was gold for Microsoft. Yeah. Because in order for people, because there's there's one other kind of competing uh, WebSocket library, and it's called Socket IO, okay. and it's a completely open source, completely uh, uh, kind of opposite spectrum of what Microsoft typically <laughs> right. is, right? And so you've got. And we a, know how well oh, completely open source stuff does sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so Microsoft really made a good choice with that yeah. when they did that. And so you've got 
I mean, we we've we've integrated Signal R into iOS apps, Android apps, um, iPad. I mean, we just you name it, and we've integrated yeah, Signal R. The front end, it's irrelevant on the front end, right? For the most part, now you Makes can no whatever you want. Yep. Native apps connecting to this, getting that information in real yeah. time. We we call it platform agnostic. Yeah, and and that's yeah. that's exactly what it is. You don't need to know what platforms what sure. you're targeting. It's just going to work. So, what do you think are like the three best implementations of this you've seen so far? Who's really, who's really done it? Maybe uh, some of the stuff that you guys are doing. What's re- what? What does it really work best on, or what are the best things you've seen sure. using it? So, I'll give one example of a project we just we're just wrapping up. Um, we had a guy come to us that runs a large uh, shotgun sports club, a shooting club, a trap and skeet club, basically. Sure. And uh, that industry is is not technologically. They don't adapt technology very well. <laughs> so. That you might have a thousand shooters at, let's say, a trap and skeet event. Um, Nebraska, it's huge. You don't realize that even in the high schools, yeah, Nebraska, no, really, how huge trap, big, trap big deal is. here. Big okay. deal. Yeah. Don from Nebraska, in the middle of Nebraska, they have the state championships every year. The thousand high school kids from Nebraska. Wow. There, wow. wow. So it's huge. So anyway, uh, <laughs> he's the director of a, of a trap and skeet club here in Nebraska, and they hand do everything. So they have, let's say, I think they have 14 stations. There's a score at every station, writing it down on paper. There's runners that come and pick up those paper sheets, take it back to the clubhouse. There's a guy there with an Excel spreadsheet, entering, hand entering everything in, calculating all the. And there's and it's a very calm. It's a very old trap, trap and skeet shooting. Or it's a very eight like kind of old. Got a lot of history in England and, and Europe and things like that. So there's a lot of different kind of weird rules and stuff. So basically, what we did is we wrote an iPad app, so that each score has an iPad Mini, mm. and. It's they go through and they can score every. There's like maybe five shooters on the field. They go through, they score that. What that does is that in real time sends those scores up to a database in the cloud, and that server in the cloud then sends a signal out, message out to to whoever's broadcast, whoever subscribes to it. So in other words, in they have a big TV in the clubhouse. Mm. That's like a 70 inch TV mm-hmm. that's got a dashboard on it. A mm-hmm. score, uh, like a scorecard. Yeah. So right, as soon right. as the score scores that scorecard, instantly updates. Instantly updates in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Also, there's a mobile app, so parents, if they're going to that event, yeah. they can be sitting there watching, and and they know right because sometimes you know you can't see things like right, that. Right. It pops up right away. Hey, hey, Jim just Jim just got a hit, miss, hit, miss. You know who's the lead? It shows the leaderboard. Thing. Right. So that's all real time. Wow. And you're talking about uh, a web server. Uh, a mobile app and then an iPad, so an iPhone app, Android app, and then an iPad app. So all those using Signal R, right. which is awesome. So that's so that's kind of a huge implementation yeah. that we've done. Yeah. Um, from a business standpoint and from a, from a bottom line standpoint, I gave this example in our in our yeah. presentation. Perfect. Is we have a customer in Oregon that we wrote an app for several years ago that uh, it's one app, but depending on who logs into it, it can be either a client app or a technician app. And what they what they do is they assist retail cellular stores in tr- uh, phone troubleshooting and repair. Okay. And so th- this app actually talks to the phones and sends commands to it. And There's a chat function where the, the worker at the cellular store can chat with the technician. They have about 120 employees at, at the, their headquarters in Portland, Oregon. So to, func- to, to facilitate this chat functionality and, and sending commands from the technician over to the client application, we use WCF, which is Windows Communication Foundation. Sure, it's a sure. Pretty, Pretty widely used web service mm-hmm. protocol. Well, it's also very heavy because not only do you have your standard kind of HTTP request response, it's very, like you said, very chatty. Yeah. And it's, there's a lot to it. It's got to go to a lot of places. It's got to go yeah. to a lot of places. There's a lot of data. There's yeah. And also with WCF, you have a whole other level of headers, kind of the, <laughs> more traffic. Over so More chatty, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And they, they, they're a very busy company. So they're, we have them on Rackspace, and their bandwidth bill alone every month is about $3,800. And when SignalR came out and we had done some test cases and used it in some small projects, we went out to Portland and we said, uh, hey guys, you know, we were already planning to do some changes and add some upgrades to the application. We said, we've got this new technology that's Microsoft technology. Um, and we feel like if we implement this in your application across the board and replace the WCF stuff with SignalR, that we can save you some bandwidth. Because mm. SignalR, literally, the only thing that it's sending is JSON. You know, ser- just just sure. serialized string back and forth. Right. Yeah. And so they signed off on it, and by the time we got everything done and implemented and pushed out the update, the next month their bandwidth bill was twelve hundred dollars. Oh wow. So twenty six hundred dollars yeah. of their bandwidth bill right. was that WCF overhead. Wow. So from a bottom line, if you're an IT manager, or a product manager, or or a CFO, and you're looking at this going, man, you know, yeah, it's it's an investment to kind of 
you know, replace that, that traditional communication model with, with Signal R or WebSockets, in the long run, you're saving a lot of money doing yeah. it. Just from bandwidth. Wow. Yeah, just from the overhead. Just from the overhead. That's it's pretty it's a good message. Yeah. From that standpoint. Yeah. So as you look to the future of this, as you look ahead, what are you excited about for the future? I mean, always, there's always those things that yeah. aren't implemented yet or you're waiting for things things around that that you're waiting for? There are. I mean, it's a young technology, it's thirteen yeah. months old. Yeah. And so um, what we're really, really hoping for at Gilix is that Microsoft continues to keep it open, uh, to let it flourish, to let developers do what they will yeah. with it. Um, I, we're, a, we're in the Microsoft BizSpark program. We're yep. certified Microsoft developers, yep. but we also are cognizant of the fact that Microsoft has a history of letting things languish on the vine, <laughs> yeah. and they have a history of taking a really good technology and kind of burying it, burying it, or yeah. doing something that really messes with developers, right. and, and developers right. don't want to use it anymore. Yeah. Um, and so we're hoping that they'll let the community run with it. And the, the, so far, they've been they've been very very open. good. Good. Um, They've, they've really embraced the Mono project, which in the very early implementation of Mono, it was kind of a poke in the eye to Microsoft yeah. because they said, well, we're going to take, we love, you know, developers said, we love the ease of use of .NET, but we hate the fact that it only runs on Windows. Mm -hmm. And so their whole goal is to take that and rewrite that as a platform agnostic port. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft kind of saw that as a, as a jab. Sure. Well, lately, and I don't know if it's a shift in management or what, but lately Microsoft's been very supportive of it. Yeah. Um, and so they've and they've they've done things like um, they recently bought Xamarin. Xamarin is a company that did that uses, go through? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they and, did and, do that. Okay. And they they use Mono heavily yeah. for their iOS and their Android ports. Right. And so they bought and that 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 right there is a kind of a testament. And it wasn't a bear. It wasn't a buy and bury. Right. Buy. Right. No. You know, it was a right. it was a wow. We see. You know, Xamarin started a conference two years ago, and their their attendance doubled in one year. I mean, right. it's just huge. Yeah. Because people realize, and we use Xamarin as well. We, right. we write native, but we also write Xamarin depending right. on the client. If I can write one code base, mm -hmm. and I can deploy to iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, right? Why wouldn't I? Yeah. And they're native. They're native apps. Right. Quick to market. You can use Visual yeah. Studio. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. Yeah. You, why wouldn't I? You know. Right. I think Microsoft saw that. They're like, you know what? If we're gonna <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I think they've got to kind of consider where Windows Phone is going and right. kind of the mistakes they made sure. when iOS and Android came out, and kind of realize we better be proactive this time. Yeah, there's been a lot of soul searching on that campus in Redmond. I, I think, bet. And I bet. Over over time, and and just them thinking through, geez, what are we gonna? Okay, you know, and they they've stuck with some things and. Uh, and the writings on the wall. I think the management change will be good. I already were probably seeing some will. good things coming Did out. Did you see that they just recently announced that for Windows 8.1 and going forward, any device smaller than nine inches, Windows is free. Mm. So you I don't have the window, that, you don't have the no. Windows tax anymore. So for like the Venue 8, help. Dell Venue 8 Pro, they should have been doing that a long time. Exactly. Ago. Should I mean that that investment was done? They should have been just kicking that out. Yep. When Android went free, they should have went free and uh, and just called it good, and that would have that probably would have sped up adoption. I think we'll see more good things from Microsoft. I'll be honest, as a IT manager, I thought uh, I thought .NET was kind of dead for you know it was like oh we're really moving away from that. Man, it is resurging like I have never seen before. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what, NBC. Yeah. Um, we. Yeah. Um, we made the jump. Jeff made the jump a long time ago. He worked. He was with the Surety Life Insurance for 12 years, mm -hmm. and so they they're really they're. You want to talk about a company that does development right? They internal for internal developers. They have a great structure there. Yeah. And we do a lot of work for them as a contractor, and um, they adopted NBC very early on. And uh, when we started Agilix, we started looking at it and, it and we adopted it. And I think that. It, it took a long time for them to convince web form developers to to, <laughs> yeah. to make the jump. Yeah. It was such a pair, such a different way to program. Yeah. yeah. But man, I, it, you want to talk about acceptance? Yeah. I think I think you've got PHP and Ruby developers that look at, M, at ASP on at NBC and go, "Wow, that's mm. mm -hmm. uh, that's attractive," mm -hmm. you know, because it, it it adheres to every single HTML specification that you should. And and the MVC pattern. I mean, Apple uses MVC for iOS. Right. You know, even even Android uses it. And so when Microsoft implemented that for the web, it is a it is. It, once you get into that, it's it's you realize that Microsoft really did it right. Yeah. They nailed it with MVC. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's it, it's a resurgence. It's mm -hmm. it's kind of funny that that's taken it. You know. Windows Phone is taking a beating out there uh, from just, you know, uh, and it's a great phone. I actually carry an Android, but I have a Windows Phone at home. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and so I need to stay on top of what's going on with Microsoft from the user experience. I'm, I'm on the Windows side. Um, I don't do any of the development, but it's all consumer experience stuff, right? And so 
we need to stay on touch in, in touch with that. And I love the phone platform, right? It's just, oh, it's, it's, it's. I'll tell you what. We we actually had Nokia call us because we have some Windows phone store, Windows yeah. phone apps in the store, and Nokia called and said, if you guys update your application. We'll send you free developer phones. Oh yeah! And so, sure enough, yep. we we pushed an update, and I think he changed the version number mm -hmm. and pushed it up to the to the Windows store phone yeah. store. And a couple weeks later, arrived the Nokia developer, yeah. and they're the mid level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight hundreds you know? back yeah. in the day, eight twenties. But I'm telling you what, yeah. though, I mean that. Yeah. They they're trying. They are. No, they are trying you know? for sure. They and the are. Platform, they are. The interface is amazing. Yeah. Like the, the, the I, and Jeff's got a Windows phone, and he went from iOS to Windows phone. And right when he got it, we were playing with it. I said, "This is a, this is a, this because iOS and Android is exact same." Yeah. You know, and but Windows Phone is completely different, and it's an it's an amazing experience. It is. You know, it is. If I'm a Sprint customer, and if Sprint had a decent Windows Phone, mm -hmm. I would probably be on it. If I could get a Lumia product yeah. on on Sprint, which they just don't exist yet, I would I would probably be there. I took my uh, took my Lumia 900 with me to Europe. And uh, just download the maps before you go, and it's instant GPS. You don't need that. You don't even need connectivity. I bought some. I bought a SIM card while I was there and used it that way. But it, it was instant GPS, and it just worked. My Android phone, nah, not so much yeah. at that point, yeah. right? So and some of that was the carrier problems. I won't. I won't blame that all on Android. But but uh, anyway, some good stuff coming up. It's an exciting time, I think. It is to be. Uh, you guys are located here in Omaha. We're in Lincoln. You're we're in Lincoln. We're actually okay. in the Technology Development Center, uh, the University Tech Park. Okay. Um, which is more of a multi-tenant space now. Now the Innovation Campus is coming into Lincoln. Yeah. Um, but we're out there in the Technology Development Center, right off I or. Interstate 80 and, and I-80 that goes down yep. to the stadium right mm -hmm. there. Yep. Um, so we haven't made the move downtown or anything like that yet. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to be down in the Haymarket in Lincoln. Now. Yeah. So we haven't done that, but we like it. It's a good area. Yeah, we've got we've got Rod Armstrong with AIM right down the hall. Sure. We've got Invest Nebraska sure. right across the hall. Yeah. So we've yeah. got some good people out there. Yeah. Good. How many employees? We've got six full-time employees now. Okay. Um, we, we're bringing on another another one of ours graduates from Concordia College oh, in good. May. Oh, good. So he'll be coming on full time. Yeah, it's good um, to see you're reaching out to that school there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do our software builders challenge every year. Okay. So we we partner with Assurity and we we have a big we bring in high school and college kids to come in and we give them a real world problem and they try to solve yeah. it in the software. So we've hired a couple interns from there and then actually the 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 guy that we're hiring from Concordia he has been in it two years in a row. Oh, good. And now he's coming to work for us. So. Yeah, we're having great success with interns too at Gallup. That's a Good. program Jody and I run, and that, I, I encourage organizations just to get find these kids in school, give them a couple years, and it's then bring them in. That's it's great. It's great for the organization, but for the kids as well, because kids anymore are just told go to college, don't worry right. about it, just go to college, yeah. and that's just not the case. And so yeah. when you can get them in there and let them know, hey, this is what it's really like. To, yeah. To do yeah. It, right. You know, it, it we're them, trying to catch them in high school level, so we have a high school internship program as well that mm. we started. To try and get them interested in that junior and senior year, and then we want to hold on to them as freshmen. That's a you know, great take idea. Take them through. Yeah. I mean, if I could get, I mean, ideally, I could get a developer that has six years of experience before they're even right. out of school. Right. Well, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, how great would that? And be? they know your organization inside right. and out. Right. Right. You know? How great. You know would that their be? strengths so. and everything like yeah. that from the get go. So Agilix, spell that one time, one more time for me. A G I L X. Very good, very easy. And uh, if they, if folks want to know more information about it, I assume they just head out to agilix.com. Agilix.com. Yep. Uh, so Dustin, thanks for taking a few minutes, and thanks for coming a little bit early. It looks like everybody's shutting down. I know here. everybody's out of here. Mass so. exodus as we've been talking, but thanks for spending a few minutes with Absolutely, me. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, you too.